Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 50. Wow. On Now You Know. All right, we're going to try something new this week. We're going to try a lightning round because there's so many darn stories. So much news. So let us know what you think. Here is Lucid Air's Prototype 2, which was shown at the Monterey Car Show this week. And now they say their production timeline is for 2019. All right, so we just got some new pictures of basically how the Model 3 will work. Your phone is now going to be the main key to the car. And you'll have a backup key, which is going to be uh, the size of a credit card in your wallet. Mercedes releases the Cabriolet concept car at the Monterey Car Show. Wow. It's very stylish, but is anyone going to ever be able to buy one? Tesla remembers your butt. All right, so this is a tweet from Elon. We are going to move all info and settings to the cloud, aka server, so any Tesla you drive in the world automatically adjusts to you. Right, so this definitely has something to do with the Tesla network. That means if I get into your car, it'll remember who I am and it'll adjust the steering wheel and the seat to me. Right. Wow. SpaceX's Dragon capsule, the CRS-12 resupply mission from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, launched on Monday, August 14th, flew to the International Space Station with 6,400 pounds of cargo, including 30 cups of Bluebell ice cream. This is the 14th rocket recovered by SpaceX. Taiwan's economic affairs minister resigned last week as human error at a natural gas power station caused 668,000 homes and offices throughout Taiwan to lose electricity for about seven hours. This was Taiwan's biggest power outage since 1999. Now, Taiwan's Minister of Science and Technology said that the Taiwanese government would look to potentially form a joint venture with Tesla for a battery project. Tesla is using its lithium ion battery technology to help Australia and California to implement smart grid and grid storage, and we can learn from them in the future, they said. The Economist is a magazine that's been around since 1843. It's quite a well-respected magazine, and just take a look at the cover of this month's edition. Wow, I think that speaks for itself. Elon predicted that an EV would get 1,000 kilometers of range in 2017, and look at this, he was right. Eric Lundgren and Jehu Garcia went 1,204 kilometers, that's 749 miles, wow. on a 162 kilowatt hour battery. This is a car called the Phoenix. They built this for $13,000. They built it in about 40 days, and it's manufactured from 90% consumer waste. They drove this record on the 7th of July at highway speeds. Wow. 50 Home Depot stores throughout New Jersey, Connecticut, Maryland, California, and New York will get about 50,000 solar panels installed on the roofs. And at six of those stores, Tesla power packs will be installed. The new rooftop solar projects are part of Home Depot's efforts to utilize 135 megawatts of alternative and renewable energy by 2020. The solar systems are not being installed by Tesla, instead they're being installed by GE. Tesla started pushing its latest over-the-air autopilot software update, 2017.32, for cars equipped with second-generation hardware last night. We've added a new setting, Auto High Beam, that makes using high beam headlights more convenient by automatically switching to low beams to avoid shining too much light at other drivers. When you enable the setting and turn your high beams on, Model S temporarily switches to low beam headlights if traffic is detected in front of the vehicle. So this is something we've had for over a year, but now the rest of the world is getting it. Nice. And here are some pictures of the new Model S rear seats. They're not that different from the last seats, but they do have some slight changes. And if you're about to buy a Model S, it could make a difference for you. So you're seeing some pictures here of the Audi e-tron Quattro SUV. A camouflage version was just spotted. Um, and basically this car should go into production in 2018. So this camo vehicle was spotted towing a trailer. Hmm, much like the Model X. The e-tron Quattro is going to have an estimated 275 miles of range on a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack. So in solar news, in 2017, it was estimated there would be 70 to 80 gigawatts of solar energy installed in the world. That has now been blown away. It is now 90 gigawatts. And the estimate for 2018 is 100 gigawatts. Now, to give you some perspective, that is 15 to 20 nuclear power reactors. Wow. And check out this graph here. So this is the World Economic Outlook from the International Monetary Fund. Each line you're seeing on this graph is a prediction um, 
for what the future of solar power is going to look like and you see that every single year it keeps going up wait so back in 2002 that little green line at the bottom that's what they thought it would look like in, t in 2002 yes and then in 2004 2006 but it's they've been wrong every single time every single time they've been too conservative and now the latest number that's that the dotted line at the top that's what they're expecting it to look like it's right. exponential all right that was our lightning round tell us what you think in the comments basically every week there is so much news and this week was no exception there was so much news and a lot of what we thought was important enough to mention uh but we didn't want to go too in depth on it so right. we just thought we would bring it to your attention but now let's get back to your regularly scheduled stories um and let's talk about them all right so the model 3's aero wheels they've been de-aeroed this week yes uh, what does that mean so the aero wheels are this sort of uh very covered looking wheel they are more efficient because of the covering and these um, come with the base model so you don't pay extra for these right and a lot of people have been complaining about the look of them right me included uh and i think that they look great turns out you can pull off the plastic coverings and, and they look like this they look sort of like this it's which i think looks better that's a kind of a nice option if you didn't like the look of the air wheels to begin with and you want to save 1500 bucks because the next step up is the 19 inch wheels which are 1500 dollars more right so you know you could definitely save yourself a bit of money and uh, I'm, I'm interested to know what our viewers think i mean would, would you you're going to lose some range by pulling those plastic things off right. i think like two or three percent probably somewhere around there so is it worth it to do that um also do you like the look without the caps on I think the caps are kind of chintzy because they're plastic, but I don't know. What do you guys think? All right, so an open AI bot wins at Dota. What is Dota? So Dota is a game, and I have never played Dota, so I can't speak to it. As but what does Dota stand for, first of all? It's, uh, we look this one up. It's Defense of the Ancients. Okay, so... It's a multiplayer battlefield game. All right, so what's... I mean, so we're seeing some footage here of... I guess this guy in red is the bot. And yep. he's playing, what, a, a computer? Or is he playing a human? He's playing a human. This graph here, I'm, I'm kind of... Under, I don't really understand it. It started in April. Yep. They, so they started teaching the bot, this AI bot, how to play the game back in April. Right, and, and it was it, bad. It was bad at it. Right. And now, you look at the graph in August. What does it mean it got to 90% plus there? It's able to beat its competition 90 plus percent of the time, which and is... it just taught itself? It just taught itself. And it's not just playing like random people. It's playing like top level players. This is why Elon has said that it's something that we should be worried about yeah. in terms of AI. Not because they're going to beat us at Dota, <laughs> but because... If they can beat you at a computer game, they right. can beat you at almost anything. Right. So this next story, we're going to talk about Tesla's service fleet. So normally when you get, have to get your car fixed, you bring it to a place and they hoist up at a jack and they look under it and they say, oh, it's, uh, it's your carburetor. This is one of the number one complaints I hear from people who don't want to get a Tesla. They're like, well, I, where would I bring it to get it fixed? Right. And when I tell them, like in Massachusetts, there's two places right now, two service centers, like, oh, see, I can bring it to any Chevy dealer right. if I have a Chevy. So what's the mobile service fleet do for you? So the mobile service fleet will come to wherever you are, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, so you don't have to reschedule your life around your car. They can do about 90% of the different kinds of, of maintenance yep. on your car. Look at these pictures. In your driveway. Look at these pictures here from Electric where the owner needed seats replaced in his Tesla and they drove to his house and replaced the seats mobily so he didn't he wasn't inconvenienced. So they're adding new mobile service fleets. 350 new service vans are being added. They currently have 130 vans, so that's a huge increase. Yep. They're also adding 100 new service centers, which will bring them to over 250 service centers throughout the world, and then 1,400 new service technicians. So what would you say if I told you you could have colored solar panels on your roof? I don't know, what color would I want on my roof? Wait a minute, what, how would you do that? So the researchers at the Dutch Institute AMOLF have come up with a way that doesn't use dyes or anything. It uses these little nanotubes mm -hmm. that are a millionth of a meter in diameter to change the color of the solar panel. Now, you do lose a little efficiency. You lose about 2% efficiency, mm -hmm. but then you can create just about any color you want, which many have thought if you could change the color of solar panels, you might start getting more and more companies and, and people wanting to put them on their roofs because they could choose the color. Right. A lot of people's color, favorite color is not you know, black or blue. Right. 
it's going to be red or yellow. The, or the green. reason they're dark black or blue is because that absorbs more energy, and so that's why they've never made them like. Because if you make them yellow, you bounce a lot of energy away from them. Right. But this new technology might allow you to have colored solar panels, which would mean that you could like spell out words on the roof of your company. Right. And there wouldn't be that many solar panels that would have to be you know inconvenienced with having this die on them. All right. V two G. V2G? Is that like the speed of your phone or something? Uh, no, actually. It's uh, vehicle to grid. What's vehicle to grid? So normally you're charging your car. It's coming from the grid and it's going into your vehicle. Well, what if the grid could utilize the storage capacity of your battery in your electric car to power itself when it needed it? and when it had surplus, it could pump up your battery. That's cool. I mean, Bloomberg New Energy Finance just estimated a new estimate that 54% of new car sales by 2040 will be EVs. That's an upgrade from 35%, which is their previous forecast. And now, we all know that, that Elon thinks it's going to be way higher than that. Right. And their previous forecast, by the way, was like two months ago. Right, exactly. So. <laughs> now, here's the other cool thing. A lot of people have said, well, your cars sit around 95% of the time not being used, like you just point out. Mm -hmm. But if you take all the power out of your battery down to zero and then you pump it up full to 100%, you're going to kill your battery. Right. Well, some researchers at the University of Warwick suggested that the degradation is not necessarily a foregone conclusion. They found that under the right conditions, that if you give that power um, control to a third party that can monitor your battery mm -hmm. and not allow it to get to zero and not push it all the way up to 100%, that you can actually extend the life of your battery uh, 9% in capacity fade and 12% in power fade. Basically, to sum this up, to parse this, uh, about a 10% extension of the life of your battery if you let someone else control you know, it smartly. Wouldn't this be awesome? Yeah. We wouldn't have to have, I mean, so power packs, if you think about it, a Tesla power pack is just a fraction of a Tesla car's battery. Right. And so if you have your Tesla car while you're at work and it's, and it's connected to the, to the grid, or any electric car really, um, the grid could utilize a portion of your battery to, right. um, you know, account for surpluses and demand as it's needed. And it doesn't have to, you know, turn on peaker plants or any of that kind of stuff. It can just, using mostly battery power, just keep everything stable. Exactly. Your cars become the grid. All right, it's time for the Patreon bonus story of the week. All right, so head on over to Patreon if you want to go check that out. Um, if you're a Patreon supporter, you're going to see that sort of sitting right there on your, on what your is, dashboard. What is Patreon again? Patreon is a way for you to support people who are making content for you. And uh, we've just made some bonus content for our Patreon subscribers and they get to go view it. Now, if you aren't a Patreon supporter and you go to our Patreon page, you're not going to be able to see it unless you support us. Uh, but it takes as little as $1 a month. Go check out that Patreon bonus story and we'll see you back here now. All right, every week we like to thank our Patreon supporters who mean so much to us. And this week we want to give a big shout out to Elon Hickler, Victor Seal, Brian Seeley, David Bolt, and Paul Maunders. Thank you so much for being our Patreon supporters. Again, we couldn't do this show without you. Every week we like to uh, talk about a comment that we thought was you know, particularly interesting. Um, so I have an app that basically finds the best comment and then reads it out loud. So let's check it out. Hello, Zach and Jesse. Hello, Zach and Jesse. Today's comment comes from RD500 fan, and he says, Hi, guys. Saw this article on how the increase in renewable energy in the UK means electric cars now emit half the true emissions they did five years ago. See what you think. Same can't be said about ice cars over that time, eh? Cheers, Mike from Leicestershire, England. Wow. I don't know if I said that right. Well, I think you got it. Whoa! Yeah, thank you so much, Mike. I mean, that's an excellent point. Uh, as, the, as the grid gets greener, so do the electric cars. So many people use the argument, oh, it's a coal burner. Yep. I don't know who says that. No one said that to me, actually. But... <laughs> You know, people will say, you know, oh, it's just a, it's just a coal burning car. And when I explain to them that the entire grid of of the United States is getting cleaner month by month, right? They still say, we have in some states it's like entirely coal. I'm like, that's just not true. It's not true. And in England, clearly, it's even better. Even a hybrid car, it, an electric car, is over twice as clean. And Mike's point, which is, an ice car never gets cleaner. And that, yeah, 
they never they don't get any cleaner. Right. Good point, Mike. That's a great point. Superchargers, one of our favorite subjects. Tesla is going nuts again this week. We want to give a huge shout out to our reviewers. Um, all these awesome people who send in their videos. Check these out, Jesse. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is uh, eight stall Tesla supercharger station up here in uh, Edmonton, uh, Alberta, Canada. It's got eight stalls. Here's some video of the actual eight stall superchargers. We have two Teslas charging right now, two Model S's, way in the black one. Great location. Hi Jesse, hi Zach, I'm Charlie from Hamburg, Germany. Let me take you on a ride from Hamburg to the Netherlands and back with no less than seven supercharges. So without further ado, our first stop is Carmen, Germany, a very good American restaurant with real American breakfast and super cool burgers. It even has a charging station for your fuel cell car should you own one. Next stop is Mörs, Germany. Located at the parking lot of a hotel, there's not much else like shops or food, but right next to it is a beautiful park which is great for walking dogs and humans. Not much here in Sevena in the Netherlands, but you'll find two restaurants and there's always a gas station with a shop, just like in Germany. Appledorn, Netherlands is the place to go when you're into horses. There are many facilities around, a hotel or two, and not just Tesla stalls, but also quite some for other EVs. Eimsbüren, Germany is next. It is pretty unusual. Instead of the typical gas station, you find a huge gardening center, which also features a cafe and a bratwurst stand. The garden center also has a nice cafe and mind the dinosaurs. On our way back, a typical Autohof charger in Lohne, Germany. There is an Asian and a burger restaurant, and if you walk 400 meters down the road, you will find a nice restaurant with affordable yet good food. And they create their own solar power and sports car fans are welcome. Finally, we do our last charging in Rade, Germany, close to Hamburg, where we started. There's the typical gas station with shop and another burger restaurant. Luckily, we also find more and more other EV charges at the next Autohof. That concludes our journey for this time. Let us know if you enjoyed it and keep up the exciting spreading the news about the energy revolution for those who got it. Hey guys, so we're at the supercharger in Santee, South Carolina. This is relatively close to Charleston off of I-95. Uh, this is a six stall. It's a fairly old one from the looks of the stalls. Uh, near kind of a Holiday Inn and some other kind of smaller hotel thing. Hey guys, so we're at the Columbia, South Carolina Supercharger. This is an eight stall. We actually see cars here, which has been a little bit unusual for us. Um, and it's a good bit off the interstate, um, not extremely convenient. I think we give it a five out of 10. I mean, it's, it's nice, they're new superchargers and we're getting a good charge rate, but um, for convenience of other stuff, I'd say it's pretty low. So five out of 10. Hey guys, so we're at the Greenville, South Carolina Supercharger. This one is a eight spot charger. It's between a uh, Hilton Garden Inn and some other smaller suites kind of hotel. Food is in the vicinity, but not walking distance. You actually have to go back out to the main road, but there's lots of food available there. which is all of your videos every time you upload. So you asked us to do a review about the destination charges. There are four Teslas here and there are six destination charges. Inside the shopping centre, there's a Tesla shop with a Model S and a Model X. We are located in Bristol. UK. In the UK. All right, thank you very much. Hello, Zach and Jesse. Uh, we're here in St. Pete, Florida. Uh, there's a new uh, station here an eight stall charging station just opened up there's not much here it's right behind a gas station charging stations are nice but uh, really not that many amenities here so uh, give this a five well this is Menschbech uh, in Luxembourg they've got a four stall charges very well got a 500 uh, miles per hour and uh, there's a nice hotel 
as you can see if I show you up there and um, they had lovely coffee and you can have food there as well so uh, I hope you come over to Luxembourg. Hey Zach and Jesse this is Mickey I'm a Model 3 reservation holder and a Patreon supporter. I'm at the Stockton Inn in western New Jersey along the Delaware and this restaurant has two destination chargers for Tesla and one charge point J1772. Hi, we've got uh, eight Tesla charging stations here in Green Bay, uh, right off of Highway 41, and it's in a Myers parking lot, and uh, there's lots of stuff nearby. One. Hi, Zach and Jesse. A few of us are here from the Capital District EV Club, and we're meeting here to check out the newest supercharger in Albany, New York, at the intersection of I-90 and I-87. We're fortunate to have one of the few 20 stall superchargers in the country, and it's located at the area's largest mall with plenty of stores and restaurants. Just a few minutes down the road at Colony Center Mall, we have a six stall charger as well. Wow, that's awesome. Isn't that it's, cool? It's so fun to see uh, supercharger reviews from all around the world. And you know what? what? Is it this week, one of our reviewers that you just saw there is one of the new superchargers that we're gonna talk about right now. Wow, awesome. Now, before we mention all of the new superchargers, we should really shout out uh, supercharge.info. Yes. This is where we get all of our info on superchargers. Yeah, so go there if you want to check out the latest on all of the superchargers in the world. Permitted this week in South Lake, Texas, Normansund, Norway, Holmstrand, Norway, Gaithersburg, Maryland, and Tucson, Arizona. Construction going on in Wexford, Pennsylvania, and Martinsburg, West Virginia. Open this week, number 937 in the world and 325th in Europe is the four stall in Palmi, Italy. 938 in the world and 326 in Europe, a four stall in Lifton, UK. Now I do want to point out the UK may not be in Europe for very long, but for now we're going to count it as Europe. <laughs> Number 939 in the world, number 384 in the USA, is the 20 stall that we just saw in Gilderland, New York. All right, 940 in the world and 153 in China is the 10 stall in Shenzhen, Merchant Square, China. Number 941 in the world and 385 in the US is the 12 stall in Graysonville, Maryland. Number 942 in the world and 386 in the U.S. is a 20 stall in Sarasota, Florida. Wow. Number 943 in the world. Number 387 in the U.S.A. is the 12 stall in Line Oak, Florida. Number 944 in the world and 327 in Europe is the 8 stall in Tordesillas in Spain. Number 945 in the world, 388 in the U.S.A. is the 8 stall in McAllen, Texas. Wow, that is a lot of superchargers for one week. That is awesome. I want to mention a past video that we just did recently. Uh, this was an interview with Delaney Reynolds. She is an amazing person that you need to hear about who um, is doing some amazing work with the Miami Sea Rise. Yeah. She's just met with um, Vice President Al Gore and was part of his whole promo of his new movie, Inconvenient Sequel. You and should... she's getting laws passed and put in place. I know, she's, she's writing laws. And, get this, She's only 17. She can't even vote, and right. she's getting laws passed. That's cool. Go check out this go interview. Go check that out. I also want to mention that you can hear a lot of these shows as podcasts. So you can go to your favorite podcaster like Stitcher or iTunes and listen to us on Now You Know Podcasts. And lastly, if you've stayed this long, then you are a super duper person, and we need your help. We're putting together a Thank You Elon video, and we've already gotten a dozens of great thank yous from people. But here's what we need. We need a 10-second no longer. No longer than that. It has to be 10 seconds, no longer. Mm -hmm. A thank you to Elon. Tell him just one thing that you are thankful for him for. It could be about rockets or, or about going to Mars or it could be about uh, energy, whatever it is. Tell it right to your camera. Shoot it in landscape, yep, landscape mode. Try and have something cool in the background maybe. Um, we need more women especially. Kids would be awesome. Yep. Um, we want to put this thank you together for Elon because he deserves a thank you. Yep. And so help us out so you can upload it to YouTube and send us the link um, so that we can get it from YouTube. That would be the best. And you can just message us on our Facebook to let us know that you've done it. Thank you so much. If you do that, that'd be great. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Now you know.